Hello Internet and welcome to another episode of the New Player's Beginner's Guide to Star Citizen. Today we are going over flight controls, so I hope you brought your brown pants because you might need them. Flying in Star Citizen can be exciting and it can be quite mm, explosive if you do it wrong. So to begin with, let's get a keybind set up as you're going to find it useful. Press escape, click options and go to key bindings. Click advanced key bindings down in the bottom left corner and find the flight movement controls. At the very bottom of this section, you'll find a option for request landing. Set this keybind to whatever you prefer. I use equals, it's just my preference, um, but this will allow us to request landing at a click of a button instead of using the interface panels. So we need to spawn our ship, interact with the ASOP terminal and select your ship. I'm gonna use my CAX Pisces by Anvil. To retrieve it, just click retrieve and it will spawn the ship for you. So take note of the hangar that it spawns in. You're going to need this when you get to the elevator. So if we pop around the area here, we're in our corp still. Follow the signs towards the hangar elevators. As Star Citizen is really, really, really good at pointing you in the right direction by giving you plenty of signage. So in the elevator, we would need to call the elevator. So we interact with the button and we'll head in. And then on the list of all the hangars, you just need to find your hangar and select it from the list. Once you're at the hangar, you'll come out of the elevator and you'll be in your hangar. This one uh, seems a bit dramatic. It's a big hangar. It's the biggest hangar probably in the game. Um, but I've got probably one of the smallest ships in the game. So it's going to be a bit of a run here. So, yeah. Just run towards your ship. I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoy making these videos and I hope you enjoy watching them. So if you do, please hit that like, subscribe and notification icon to receive more updates of when I release new videos. Awesome. So now we've sprinted across that exceedingly large hangar for this wonderfully small ship. We'll have a quick look at this ship. It's beautiful. CAX Pisces. Nice little small starter ship. It's got a bit of room in the back for whatever you want to bring. It can hold a bit of cargo too. Got some guns, got some missiles. So yeah. Interact with the control panel on the ship to get in. Some ships don't have a panel. They have it literally a cockpit and you can have interact with the ship that way and get in. So once you're inside this ship, we need to click the button to close the uh, door. And then we can head to the pilot's chair. We'll interact with the pilot's chair as normal and sit in it. So before we go anywhere, we're going to set a destination as we are heading somewhere. So to do this, we need to open up the Moby Glass with F2, which will be the map function of the Moby Glass. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out of the map, and then obviously you can click around. You can double click also to go into places. But once we've picked a location, in this case, we're going to Arc L1. We need to click the Set Root button to make sure that we are loaded on that destination. So to start your ship up, to get it into flight ready mode, click R. That'll get everything running. If you want to turn the engines on, you can do that with I. Pressing I again will also turn them off. Pressing F4 will change your camera mode, just like when you're on foot, and you can hold Z and move the mouse to move your camera. Okay, so that's the basics out of the way of getting into your ship. Now let's get in the air. I hope you're ready. Let's go. So, to lift off, we press spacebar. That will fly you directly up. Control will fly you down. And you can land again, like that. So let's get back up in the air. Press N will retract your landing gear. It will also lower them, but we'll need that later. So for now, leave them retracted. Since we've got a big hangar, we can do some practicing inside. Isn't that beneficial? Thankfully, the game paid off for us. So before we do anything, let's head into the ship and let's request launch. Use that key bind you set earlier. In my case, it was equals. That'll get the hangar ready for launch, which will open up the hangar doors above us. You can hold F and move the mouse to change your camera angle while in first person mode while flying. So to move forward, we go press W and then S flies us backwards. To go left, we'll press A. And then to fly right, we'll press D. Just like normal FPS controls. Okay, that's some basics. Let's go over some more. Pressing Q will roll the ship to the left. Pressing E will roll it to the right. Hold it all the way and you'll go full circle. Just like that. Alrighty, so you've got the basics now under your belt. We've had enough of this overly sized hangar. Let's get out of here. So space bar to fly upwards, as we discussed earlier. Just keep going up. 
One more control you need to know before we can do anything, which we can only do outside, is afterburner. So to do that, push the direction of travel that you want to go and hold shift. It even works in backwards mode. Okay, it's time now to prepare for quantum travel. This is effectively your warp mechanic of Star Citizen. Press B and that will initiate your quantum drive. You can see it spooling up at the top. Once that's at 100%, it means the quantum drive is 100%. We've already set our destination, so that's showing on our HUD, and we can align to it. But we need to get out of the atmosphere first. So use the speed limiter, max it up to max with the mouse wheel, and hit that afterburner and get out of the atmosphere. You can see the destination we have set just below my HUD in a green triangle, upside down triangle. It's red at the minute. That means we can't travel to it, but as we exit... The atmosphere will turn blue, and that means we can now travel to it. So we'll want to align to that destination just by moving the mouse. And then the calibration of the quantum drive will happen on the left. You can see that spooling up now to 100%. Once it's at 100%, we are now ready for travel with the spooling complete and the calibration complete. So all we need to do is initiate travel. We can do that by holding B. Isn't this game beautiful? Those effects are awesome. Travel time varies per depending on the ship and the equipment that you have fitted to that ship. So this is just a basic ship, but we'll skip the travel time because I know you don't need to see all of that. Now, as we arrive in RKL-1, we'll arrive outside of the destination. It's just how the RKL-1 stations and all the Lagrange point stations work. So you'll need to realign to the target, <coughs> the right target have a side, not, not the... Know, the asteroid belt the, you know ah there we go he clicked on once you're aligned it will recalibrate again and then you can hold B to initiate travel to the station now in this run for some reason the same game decided not to land me 20 kilometers or so from the station it landed me 90 odd kilometers from the station which isn't a problem for the purpose of this video it's quite convenient once again because we're now going to test some weapon skills. Press middle mouse, that'll turn on your missiles. You can then wait for the bar to fill up and fire when it's full. It'll refill. And then you can fire again. Missiles do lock on. Once you're aligned to a target, it will automatically lock on. Using the middle mouse button again, you can then change the weapons and use the left and right mouse buttons to fire your main guns, depending on the fire groups. Simple as that. Using J will deploy noise countermeasures. And pressing H will deploy any chaff countermeasures. If you hold H, it will also fire a load of those. The longer you hold it, the more it fires. So they're good for if you have a missile that's coming in and you want to dodge it. Uh, it will literally disorientate the missile so it doesn't hit you. That's enough weapon fire, so let's uh, head to the station. I can quantum travel from this distance, so I'm just heading straight in. As we're about 20 kilometers from the station now, we need to head towards it. To do that with general movement controls and a bit of afterburner, just be warned, don't afterburn directly into the station, as in, you know, aim a little off to the side, because, you know, we've probably all made that mistake. I know I did, um, and I was warned of it. You go plowing into the station if you don't uh, watch your speed. Yeah, it's a bit embarrassing, but we all do it, so don't worry if you make that mistake. So, yeah. A line offside. Anyway, once you're in range of the station, you can then contact air traffic control to land. Although it's technically not air because, you know, we're in space. But we can use that button we set earlier. I think mine was equals to request landing. It will put a little marker on our HUD for where we need to go to. So we just need to move over to where the hangar is. And as you get closer to the hangar, you know, make sure you slow down and take a few Gs like I did. But the doors will open as you get close to the hangar. I find it really useful to you be in, th in third person mode because I can align my camera up with the hangar and it just it helps a lot. Make sure you've deployed your landing gear with N and then head into the station. Again, just use how the external camera if you prefer it, like I do. I do in bigger ships, that's for sure. Once you're in the hangar, just hover above the landing pad. Now, you can land manually, or you can hold N to initiate auto land. It's all right, guys. No one's going to judge you for not landing the ship yourself. 
there we go. Landing is complete. Your first travel in Star Citizen is done. Wasn't that bad, was it? Pretty straightforward once you know how. Turn off those engines. Ha, oh, don't they sound awesome. The one thing you want to know about before we exit the ship is the maintenance tab. Now, we discussed this in another video. Once you're in a ship and a vehicle, it will allow you to access it, and then you can restock and rearm and refuel. Once you've clicked refuel and rearm, you'll see the notification icons at the top of the window, just warning you of the progress. It's advised not to take off and land when you've got these up, so just bear that in mind. Once they're complete, engines are off, we can get it out of the pilot's chair by holding Y. That'll spin us around, and we can exit the ship in reverse of how we got in it. Access the panel, which will open the door, and we can go in. We'll need to head back up to the ASOP terminals, which are just using the elevators. So you can run through the hangar bay, access the elevator, very much like you did when we, when we took off. Once you've accessed the elevator and arrived in the main station, you'll need to access one of the ASOP terminals to store your ship. So we're doing effectively the reverse of when we access the ship, but it's important to do this and to get into the habit of doing it. One, so you don't lose your ship by someone stealing it. Not that that's a big issue, because it's really not. But if you're carrying cargo, this will also protect it. It's stored. It's safely put away. No one can access it, and you are good to go. So, guys, that is it. You have successfully completed your first flight in Star Citizen. I hope you found it fun, and I hope you enjoy playing the game. Thanks for watching this episode of the New Player's Beginner's Guides to Star Citizen. I hope you found it informative. If you liked it, please hit that like, subscribe, and notification icon to show your appreciation. It means a lot, so thank you for all that have done so. Let me know down in the comments how your first flight in Star Citizen went. Did you hit the station like Haverside did when he first started playing? Let me know. My name's Haverside, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.